Till finally on Sunday, at quarter past two, he spied all the meadows of Gilda Manju and realized he was on top of Mount Ginches, alone with the wind and his thoughts and the finches. He thought of the snoodles. He thought of the tower. He thought of the bell that would chime on the hour. He thought of his pack and his very long walk. He thought it so loudly, he heard his thoughts talk. Hello, said his thoughts. You've made quite a climb. That voice, he remarked, doesn't sound much like mine. Then he turned and he noticed he wasn't alone, for a man stood behind near a cave in the stone. He looked like a snoodle, though quite a bit bigger. Maybe a giant, the small snoodle figured. I'm going, the snoodle boy said with a huff. And don't paint a picture, I've got quite enough. But first, come inside, the man said. Have some tea. I'm so very pleased that you're visiting me. The snoodle boy stopped, though he'd only gone inches, and stared at the stranger he'd found on Mount Ginches. He didn't seem angry. In fact, he looked kind. The poor little boy was confused. Are you blind? I'm puny. I'm silly. I'm not all that smart. I can't use my wings and I'm no good at art. The stranger leaned down with a pain in his heart. Who told you these things? He asked. How do you know? These pictures I have in my pack tell me so. The small snoodle sniffled and started to go. First, if you please, let me look at this art that makes your pack heavy and weighs down your heart. Then picture by picture, he unpacked the bag that bent the poor snoodle and made his wings sag. Dear boy, said the man, these look nothing like you. Then into the fire, the pictures he threw. He rose from his chair saying, wait there, you'll see. That what you need most is a picture from me. The snoodle sat patiently, sipping his tea. Then from a room in the back he returned and said, Dear little snoodle, it's time that you learned what you really look like. And he threw off the sheet, and what the boy saw warmed him right to his feet. The boy in the portrait looked older and strong, with wings on his back that were sturdy and long and a look in his eye, both courageous and free. Sir? Asked the boy. Are you saying that's me? I like to believe it, but sir, I'm afraid to. But I know who you are, the man said, for I made you. I built the tower and set it in motion. I planted the meadow, put fish in the ocean. And I feed the finches, though most noodles doubt it. Not one of them falls that I don't know about it. I've seen you fall down in the mud and the goo. I've seen all you've done and all you will do. I gave you your pack and your paints and your wings. I chose them for you. They're your special things. The snoodle kazoo is so you can sing about colors in autumn or flowers in spring. I gave you your brushes in hopes that you'd see how using them, you could make pictures for me. Most of the snoodles, the old one said sadly, just use their paints to make others feel badly. The young snoodle pondered the things he'd been told, then wondering something, grew suddenly bold. But sir, if you made this incredible land, can't you make snoodles obey your command? The big one smiled warmly, then said to the small, A gift that's demanded is no gift at all. With that, the small snoodle reached into his pack and pulled out the picture he'd made ten miles back. There are four lilies, sir, from over the bridge. The old one beamed bright and said, That's for my fridge. After the small snoodle's picture was hung, the old one bent down to the face of the young. He said, Here's what you look like. Here's how I see you. Keep this in your pack and you'll find it will free you from all of the pictures and all of the lies that others made up just to cut down your size. And lastly, your wings. 
You know what they're for. But not just to fly, son. I want you to soar. But, sir? Said the Snoodle. How can I fly? This picture's so big, I won't get very high. But this picture's special. It's bigger, it's brighter. Carry it close, and I think you'll feel lighter. As soon as he heard it, the Snoodle looked down and noticed that he was an inch off the ground. He laughed and he leaped and he flew from the cave, feeling now older and stronger and brave. And he flew through the clouds and he flew with the finches. He soared up and down round the peak of Mount Ginches. He flew over far lily bushes in yellow and thin bottle plants squirting snowberry jello. He flew over biggle bag trees and their fruits in big lazy loops or the land of galoots. Then hurried back home to the center of town where the snoodles all stood with their wings on the ground. And starting precisely at quarter past two, he told them the story that I just told you.